Isn't it amazing to learn new things and perform new tasks successfully? At least that's how I feel. For myself, I really enjoy learning new things and applying them and seeing how it worked out well. It's such a joy. But in today's society, we always have less and less time to teach ourselves new things or be taught new things. And then on the other side, there's the fear of failing. Depending on how you failed, this might have serious consequences. On one side, it could be that you just wasted precious time and money of yourself or an organization. Failing could mean that you lose your job. Or failing could mean that another person is losing their life. But we live in the 21st century and so we have a solution for everything and the solution is technology. Now normally technology will actually go to the root cause and replace the root cause, which in this case is a human being. But there are technologies out there that are not here to replace the human, but rather to support them. And one of these technologies is augmented reality. And exactly that's why I believe that augmented reality has a very bright future in our society. But before we get into the details, let's first get clear on what augmented reality actually is. Now, you might have heard of AR, VR, and some of you might even hear AI in this conversation. Now, first and foremost, forget AI. AI is artificial intelligence and has very little to do with what I'm going to tell you next. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just compare AR and VR. Now, VR is virtual reality. And hence, as the name says, we are immersing you into a virtual environment where you can be, for example, a mid-age archer shooting bow and arrow or simply relaxing at the beach in Mauritius, enjoying the sun, just to lift up your, gla your VR glasses and realizing, oh, I'm still in the apartment I woke up this morning. And now let's get to AR. Augmented reality actually takes into account your environment and allows us to overlay virtual content on top of it. Now, this content could be, for example, new furniture or plants on top of, uh, of a shelf or just simply a piece of wood. Now, this content can be delivered in many ways. One, you guessed it, AR glasses. But most of us actually own a fully AR capable device. Our phones. Modern smartphones are actually coming out of the factory already AR capable. So almost every one of us owns an AR device, as you also can see in this image. So after this talk, I would kindly ask you to check out augmented reality. Google it, try it out for yourself, play around with it. And once you completely refurnish your entire living room, you placed plants all over your apartment. And even, the, and even if you might have caught Pikachu, I want you to think one step further. The first time I tried augmented reality, I immediately realized the potential to guide people using this te technology. Now, for the last three years, I've dedicated my time to figuring out on how to do that properly, to allow people to perform tasks and processes and guide them through them. During my master thesis with Dolma Kaba, we conducted a user study together with mechanical engineering students. Now, during this study, the students had to commission an, a gate. Now, you can imagine this gate as you know it from the airport, where you go through, you check in your ticket, it opens up, or your passport, 
a gate very similar to this, so a rather complex machine. Now these students have never in their life seen this gate and even less have they seen it disassembled. Now we can all agree those students would have never been able to perform the task on that given day without any aid. And that's where augmented reality came in. We prepared a program to guide these students through the process of actually commissioning this gate. And the conclusion of the whole story, after each trial, the gate was running. Normally, technicians go abroad for a couple of days to actually learn on how to commission this gate. And we just enabled students to do the same using this technology. Now that doesn't mean that all of a sudden those students should replace technicians because for the, for the sake of the lives of some of these students, they should really not touch a screwdriver and just stick to coding. But nevertheless, we were able to enable people. And now I want you to, stay, to think one step further. I would like to invite you on a small mind game and think about somewhere in Southern America, a small village that has one technician there and in the middle of the night, there's a blackout. The generator is not working anymore. The entire village is out of power. The only person who can fix it, the technician, has never done it in his life. He doesn't know how, because the generator didn't fail for the last five years. And now the whole village depends on him. We could use now augmented reality to guide the person through the process on how to fix the generator, telling him or her what to do on the generator and where, telling him, turn this switch here, turn this knob here, and so on, until the generator runs again. Or if we go to a rural Africa, where a doctor might need to attach a patient to a respiratory machine. Maybe the doctor didn't receive sufficient training on that machine. He doesn't know where to apply the parameters, or maybe not even which are the right ones. And here we are in a life and death situation. We could use augmented reality to help the, the doctor to put in those parameters, tell him where to put in what, and perhaps even give him suggestions of what might be the right parameter in accordance to the patient's situation. And those examples are exactly the reason why augmented reality is not here to replace people, but is here to support humanity. We at Rimond Technologies believe that we want to enable people by rethinking the manual. To allow people to perform tasks they've never done before simply by, by displaying information differently. My name is David Shapira and I thank you very much for your attention and to many more successful tasks and no more fails.